Do you remember how there used to be music stores in malls? I mean, that was like a big thing, right? Let me know if you relate to this, but no matter which mall I went to, they would always have one of those stores, and it was easily one of my favorite parts about going there. The actual name of the store at your local mall, of course, would be different depending on your region, but some of the bigger ones that stand out to me it would be Camelot Music, Sam Goody, and the one that seems to have outlasted all of them, FYE. That's the one that I'm most familiar with. I couldn't tell you how much time I used to spend flipping through their shelves of CDs and DVDs, not even buying anything half the time, just having fun hanging out there. I'm guessing you may have had similar memories, and that's what makes the story so depressing. FYE is nothing like it used to be. By most measures, they have been declining consistently since the early 2000s. In fact, it's more likely than not that the one in the mall near you has closed down, and the main reasons behind that are pretty straightforward, right? Spotify and Netflix and all the other streaming services for both music and movies have, for many people, replaced physical media, which of course has been bad for them. Back at their peak in the early 2000s, over 90% of their sales were from physical media. But even though some of those answers may be obvious, I still think it's a great case study. You're going to see that FYE was at the center of this industry, so oddly enough, I'm going to be talking about how they've declined while also talking about how they've beaten and outlasted many of their competitors. Bob Higgins was at the center of it. When it comes to music stores, he is quite possibly the most all-time important figure. In 1972, he took 30 thousand dollars of his own money that he had saved and used it to start a company in his hometown of Albany, New York called Trans World Music Corporation. It was initially a music distributor, but within the year he had opened a retail store called Record Town that quickly became the center of the business. Much of the early success came from recognizing trends in the market, trends like the rising popularity of shopping malls. After only two years, he opened a new Record Town store in a mall that did so well it became a big part of his strategy moving forward. Forward. Another trend was the popularity of audio tapes. Looking back, Record Town may not have been the best name for that initial store because it constricted them to records rather than tapes. So his solution was to open a new store with a new name called Tape World. Throughout the 1980s, things were looking bright. They continued growing by starting and expanding different chains of music stores and by acquiring other chains of music stores. They even had a public stock offering to help fund it, though it's important to mention that Bob Higgins did did maintain majority ownership, but by the 1990s, everything started slowing down. By 1995, their declining profits had turned to losses. It turns out that the supply was finally exceeding the demand, or in other words, there may have been too many music stores. At that point, there were over 500 of them owned by Transworld Music, thousands of them owned by other various companies who had also taken advantage of the last decade to aggressively expand into new areas, and the big electronic stores like Best Buy and Circuit City were also on the rise. In fact, they would specifically sell their physical media for as little as possible, sometimes even losing money from it in hopes that the customers would stick around and buy some of their higher margin electronics as well. And while I'm talking about electronic stores, another misstep for them was Incredible Universe. I may talk about this in more depth at some point, but it was a massive electronic store that they started in the early 1990s along with the Tandy Corporation, the owners of Radio Shack, that never made much money and was ultimately shut down after only a few years. So the first half of the 1990s were bad times for Transworld Music and for most of the industry in general, but they were soon able to use their competitors' struggles to their advantage. And that is a pattern that we'll continue to see with them. First off, they changed their name from Transworld Music to Transworld Entertainment to reflect their video and other entertainment sales outside of music. I doubt that was too impactful to anything, but it seemed like a smart move that had to be mentioned. Then, the following year, in 1995, they took a step back by closing a bunch of their underperforming stores. It was originally announced to be 143, but ended up being even more of them, so the result was a smaller, but much more stable and efficient business. The profits recovered, and in 1997, Bob Higgins was even named Billboard Magazine's Video Person of the Year. Now, here's where it all becomes significant. Many of their competitors didn't make that same recovery, including Camelot Music. They were another mall-based chain of music stores that had filed for bankruptcy in 
in 1996, so a couple years later, Transworld was able to buy them for $427 million. This was big because Transworld and Camelot were the second and third largest owners of mall-based music stores, and by combining, they became number one. They were both trailing Musicland, who owned both Musicland and Sam Goody, but now Transworld was the biggest, and they were looking to take advantage of their size. Now, I guess I need to take a step back here, because this was supposed to be a video about FYE, and I spent the last few minutes talking about every other store. Well, I promise, it's about to come together, because FYE suddenly becomes a huge part of the story. Here, look at my graph showing the number of FYE stores over this time. In one year, they jump from 14 to 652, and that is because the intent of the store completely changed over that time. See, it was actually started by Transworld in 1993. They opened one of them in Connecticut that was meant to be very different from all the other music stores in that it was excessively large and family-oriented. It was kind of a trend back then to test out these large stores. This one was about 27,000 square feet, which in comparison is about five times larger than what became the typical FYE that we've all been to. The company took notice of how children's movies like Beauty and the Beast were some of the best-selling movies of the previous years, so they figured that there'd be a demand for a store like this. They did everything they could to accommodate a younger age group. They had a video arcade, a children's reading area, they would even host birthday parties. A couple years later, they opened a second one in New York that was almost twice as big as the first one. Some of the later ones had coffee bars, and that's how FYE existed for the first eight or so years, growing to 14 of them by 2001. In 2001, Transworld was still the largest mall-based music store, but they were operating stores under countless different names. They had originated all these chains under different names, and acquired chains operating under more different names. The biggest one of those being the recent acquisition of Camelot Music, that also included a couple of other chains under different names. I mean, it was a mess, and the main flaw of that structure is that it doesn't build a strong brand, and they knew that, so they spent 18 months conducting research and interviewing customers before finally deciding that they would convert all of their stuff into one consistent brand, and that brand ended up being FYE. At the time of the announcement, they said that it would help build their customer loyalty, provide them with a consistent shopping experience between different locations, and even allow them to advertise on a national level, with their new slogan, Never Stop Playing. To be clear about this, the rebranding applied to their mall-based stores and their online operations. They even called it an unparalleled bricks and clicks presence. But to a lesser degree, they did have freestanding locations under various brands as well, such as coconuts and specs that were unaffected by this change. So that is how FYE grew so ridiculously fast. The following year, they invested even more into their stores by installing all of these listening and viewing stations, which I thought were amazing. You could actually put on the headphones and hear the CD while you're still in the store. I have to think that this may have grown into one of the biggest companies of our time, had things worked a little differently in the way of physical media. But sadly, FYE, in this form, never had much of a chance. Right when all of these changes were made in the early 2000s is right about the time physical media started declining. 2001 was the first year that they had ever seen a decline in their CD sales. Napster was out there with their internet downloads, not to mention copying CDs, so the transition was already in effect. I don't know what else to say. The years that followed were not kind to FYE. Though considering they were bigger and had a solid enough foundation, they did outlast almost all of their competitors, even acquiring many of them when given the opportunity. Examples of this would be Warehouse Entertainment and even Musicland, the owners of Sam Goody and Suncoast Motion Picture Company in 2006. In the beginning of this video, when I said that the name of your own music store would be different based on your region, whatever the name of that store was, if I haven't said it already, I encourage you to look into it because there is a decent chance that it somehow made its way under the ownership of Transworld and FYE. Despite absorbing the competition like that, it hasn't really helped much. They have been losing money most years as a result of declining revenue, but I think the number that shows it best is their same store sales. For 15 of the 17 years following the big rebranding, sales at the store level have been going down when compared to the year before, meaning that things have been going downhill for FYE for just about as long as any of us have ever known about them. Honestly, when the thing that accounts for 90% of your sales is no longer in demand, I don't know what you're supposed to do. You can't just replace your entire selection with something new, but I guess that is kind of what they've been trying to do. In 2014, Bob Higgins stepped down 
down from his CEO position after having held it for the company's entire 42 year existence. He did stay involved as far as the board of directors and ownership until he died three years later at the age of 75. At that time, a new CEO took over with the plan of turning things around by selling more pop culture related trendy stuff. I'm talking about Rick and Morty merchandise and pop vinyl figures and whatever else. Before he took over, that kind of stuff accounted for 12% of their sales, and by 2019 it was 46%, actually more popular than the media they sold. They also changed their logo and a lot of rebranding in 2016, going from the blue to the orange. I guess it's a decent enough plan, but as far as I can tell, it hasn't helped them in any kind of significant way. Everything continued to fall, and in their 2019 reports, they said that there was substantial doubt about their ability to continue. Which does not sound good, they couldn't continue operating losing money like that. So in 2020, for the first time ever, FYE got new owners. For $10 million, they were sold to Sunrise Records, which is a Canadian music store chain that had recently acquired a British music store chain called HMV Records. They expressed intentions to change everything away from FYE, so it's really not looking good for the brand. As far as Transworld, I should finish up with them, they had bought this online retailer, E-Tails, in 2016 who became their core focus after selling FYE, and the name of Transworld was changed to Caspian Holdings later that same year. So that's that. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about FYE? Do you have any good or bad memories there, or maybe at one of those other music stores? Like I said, I think it's an interesting story, because what happened to FYE and Transworld is reflective of what happened to the rest of the industry. They've been involved in all of it, and I'm not saying that they did everything perfect, but with such an important part of their business becoming so insignificant, I would have to say that's the core of their failure. So any thoughts you have about FYE or any of these other mall-based music stores, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.